everybody, I am That Nursing Prep and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Hepatitis B. So let's get into it. First of all, what is it? What is it? It's a virus that causes an infection and inflammation in your liver. So who is at risk for getting Hep B? Children whose moms have it. So if mom has hepatitis B and she is pregnant with you, you are likely to get it. You are at risk for getting it. Tattooing. Now, a lot of places, there are laws about safety and cleanliness when it comes to tattooing and tattooing needles and things like that. But it is still considered a risk factor for getting it. Having unprotected sex and having sex with multiple partners. Those who work in healthcare because we're more likely to be exposed to it. We're exposed to people who have it and we're exposed to needles and blood and body fluids more than other people that don't work in healthcare. Those who either travel to or live in an area that's considered unsanitary. Sharing needles. So this could be people who are using needles for drugs, or it could be people who are using needles and syringes for things like insulin. So you never want to share your needles or share your medications with another person. And you never want to do drugs either. Those who are on dialysis, and those who live with somebody who is infected with hepatitis B. These are the people that are at highest risk for contracting it. How is it spread? A couple of these risk factors are how it's spread. So children whose mothers have it, so your mother has hepatitis B and she's pregnant with you, you are more likely to have it transmitted during pregnancy. It can be transmitted through bodily fluids, so unprotected sex, tattooing, sharing needles. Also, being bitten by somebody who has hepatitis, especially if they break the skin and there's blood, Sharing toothbrushes, razors, or other, you know, household things that could contain blood or bodily fluids with somebody who has hepatitis B. And one special thing I do want to point out, it is not spread by breastfeeding. So yes, it can be spread during pregnancy from mom to fetus, but once baby is born, this should not discourage you from breastfeeding your baby. It is not spread by breastfeeding. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms. So one thing I want to point out is some people will never develop symptoms. But if they do, they could have the following. They could have generalized like aches and pains, a mild fever. They could report stomach pain because of the liver, a loss of appetite, diarrhea, and overall lack of energy. And a lot of these things make sense, right? Because this is an infection and these are infectious signs and symptoms. They can also, if it gets really bad, experience jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin or eyes. They can have dark urine or even brown colored urine and clay, really like light colored stools. They can have an enlarged liver or spleen, so when you're palpating the abdomen, you can feel it and it might be tender to the touch. How is this diagnosed? Well, because it involves the liver, we're going to do our liver function studies. So our AST and our ALT will be elevated. We're going to do a blood test to check for antigens. And actually, this blood test is really helpful because not only does it tell us, you know, do they have hepatitis B, it also tells us where in the progression of the disease are they. So for example, if they have HBSAG, they are in the infectious stage. So this is the acute stage. So it's recently started happening and affecting their body. So they're in the infectious stage. If they have anti-HBS, now they have immunity, so they were exposed to it, they went through the infectious stage, and now they've developed immunity. And if they have HBEAG, that means the virus is currently replicating in their body. So this blood test is very, very helpful, not just detecting do they have hepatitis B, but at what phase is the infection? Where are we at with it? We can also do a couple of other things. 
So we'll do an abdominal ultrasound to show the size and the shape of the liver. So just like here, enlarged liver, we're going to be palpating to feel it. If we do, if we do feel an enlarged liver, likely they will order an abdominal ultrasound so we can actually visualize it. And then finally, they're probably going to want to do a liver biopsy. So taking a little bit of the liver and biopsying it to see what's going on. Now let's talk about our nursing interventions. So in the acute stage, right, the infectious stage, they're sick, they don't feel good. So what are the things we're going to do? We're going to encourage them to rest, so limit their activity. Encourage them to drink lots of fluids, lots of water. And a healthy diet. So for hepatitis B patients specifically, we want high carb, high calorie to give them that energy to help fight this infection and low fat, low protein diet. That's the diet we want to encourage, which is a liver friendly diet. Of course, always reminding them the importance of hand hygiene because they're already infectious. And then avoiding things like over-the-counter medications and herbal supplements. So avoiding anything that could potentially damage the liver or needs to use the liver. Remember, at this point, the liver is inflamed, it's infected, it's causing a lot of problems. So all of these things can cause potential damage to an already damaged liver. So avoiding any over-the-counter medications and herbal supplements, vitamins, things like that unless absolutely necessary. So this is the acute stage. This is when they're really feeling sick. In the chronic stage, so you've had it for a longer period of time, now we actually have medications. There are like seven approved FDA medications to help treat hepatitis B, and they'll just choose the one that's most appropriate for the individual patient that you're taking care of. So these are all antiviral meds. They need to be taken every single day. And what they do is they help slow the virus's ability to multiply, which eventually will help decrease swelling and liver damage over time. So that is how they help. So a chronic patient, we still want to encourage these things, right? We still want them to be on this diet and hand hygiene and avoiding over-the-counter meds, things like this. We still want to do all the acute stuff, but also now we can add antiviral medications. And let's say we didn't catch it, okay? We weren't able to do these nursing interventions. We weren't able to help them. Some potential long-term effects or consequences of hepatitis B include cirrhosis of the liver, so scarring, liver failure, liver cancer, and even death. So of course we don't want these things to happen. So it's very important that we do good assessment on our patients and then do good nursing interventions to help them. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this video is prevention, because of course we don't want anybody to get this. Now let's talk about prevention. So the recommendation for children in the United States is that they get the hepatitis B vaccination in childhood. So that's gonna help keep them safe. Other things that could help prevent getting hep B, practicing safe sex, so using condoms, never sharing needles, ensuring safe hygiene practices when tattooing or piercing. Like I said earlier in the video, this is actually a law. They have rules they have to follow for sanitation. So making sure if you are going to be a customer at one of these places, that it's clean and that they're following these rules. Never sharing razors or toothbrushes with somebody who has hepatitis B. Nurses should use standard precautions when caring for all patients. So that includes, you know, hand hygiene and wearing gloves. And nurses should also use needleless devices when possible. So if we're giving a medication and it comes in an injectable form or a needleless form, choose the needleless form if you can. Encouraging them to eat cruciferous vegetables. So this is like broccoli and Brussels sprouts. These vegetables are really good at protecting the liver. So eating a nice healthy diet. And then finally, smoking and alcohol. Avoid them both. Alcohol and tobacco are both very dangerous, bad things that can cause harm to your liver. 
So if you already have an impaired liver, you are at higher risk for getting hepatitis B. So that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.